Hey everyone, welcome back to season two, episode one of Mindset Monday. All right. Hey, I'm back doing Mindset Monday, and I'm going to tell you straight up before I even get into the content, before I even get into the idea that I'm going to share, I wasn't planning on doing this. I, I t- wanted to kind of do 10 episodes, go through it, and uh, I actually posted on Instagram a clip of one of my episodes and I'm recording this and I got a really wonderful message from lisa.k721, Lisa Kaparchuk. And Lisa, if you're listening, uh, you know what? You get a shout out. Uh, You actually shared, this is what you said in your comment. This was exactly what I needed to hear this morning. Mindset Monday have been so inspirational and always get me thinking. And I responded back to you. And then you actually, I said, I think you didn't know anyone was listening. And then you said, it's my Monday morning routine. And I just wanted to share that is, was kind of the inspiration. I was like, I should keep recording this. And it really just kind of shows you how you don't know how a positive comment can actually make a significant difference on the life of someone else. I probably, I don't know if I would have even thought about doing an, another season. Um, if it wasn't for Lisa's comments. So Lisa, thank you so much for doing that. Uh, I hope uh, at least I know one person is listening. So uh, just shout out to you for doing that and taking that time. And I get nice comments too, but that, that like you just never know, right? And it's, I always say to always err on the side of, the, of positive because you just never know the impact. So I wanted to highlight um, that as well. So let's let's get into the content, talk about Mindset Monday. And today's theme is going to be kind of in your face is maybe you're the problem. And uh, it's kind of in your face, but I wanted to share a couple of stories, you know, and I try to do a personal story, professional story, and I'm going to start with the personal story. I remember uh, years ago, and I, I hate saying this, I've struggled with weight many times in my life. Uh, I've kind of gone up and down. And uh, I remember one of the times I was kind of on this journey and I was getting really heavy as early in my teaching career. I remember actually um, inviting a friend over for dinner and uh, I made, I wanted to make something really good for him. So like uh, my mom actually makes these wonderful Greek hamburgers, right? Um, I don't know if they're Greek hamburgers. I just call them Greek hamburgers because my mom's Greek. I'm Greek. She makes hamburgers, the Greek hamburgers. So she makes these hamburgers and then uh, just they're homemade. Wonderful. She'd always send me some. And I'd cook them, you know, when a time is convenient. So I made uh, these two hamburgers and, uh, and I put like cheese and double cheeseburger. So I made two of them just like so big, just, just incredible. Right. Then I actually, um, I, I make a special chip dip again, shout out to my mom, and my dad for teaching me this, just the best chip dip. So good. It's amazing. Super high calorie, super unhealthy. And, uh, and I bought this gigantic bag of chips and uh, I had one for my friend, one for myself. So not like the little chips, but big chips. Cause you know, this chip dip, you got, it's like good. It's gold. You never get sick of it. So we got these two hamburgers, got this big bag of chips, some chip dip. And, uh, then I, you know, gotta have some dessert. So I make this big bowl of ice cream, but you know, it's not just good enough to get the ice cream. You gotta get the toppings. You gotta get this thing. You gotta get, you know, this, this, and you add all this stuff up. Right. So I have this gigantic meal. My friend uh, can can barely move. Right. I'm going to be honest. It's kind of how I just ate, you know, when I was, you know, kind of, you know, started off teaching while I was stressed. I was just eating this way. And after because I had ate so much, I was really, really thirsty. So I actually took this gigantic cup of, um, you know, that you get from a movie theater. It's like past cups. I still drink out of my love, but uh, not done the healthy stuff. And I actually put iced tea in it. I was drinking it. And I, I said to my friend, this is where it's getting ridiculous. I said, I think this iced tea is making me fat. <laughs> and he looked at me and he said, you think it's iced tea? It's, it's not the, the two cheeseburgers. It's not all the ice cream. It's not the giant bag of chips and the chip dip that's made out of the, you know, most unhealthy ingredients ever. It's the iced tea. And it was like, okay, yeah, 
that's probably it's probably not the AC, right? And I think sometimes um, we look at things on the outside and kind of blame other things, you know, of why we're not a certain way, why we're not doing this. And really kind of thinking about that. And I think for me, the thing is, is that when we identify, and I'm not saying this is not legitimate, by the way, when we identify other things as the problem, then those other things also have to become the solution. But sometimes when we actually point to people as the problem, then the issue becomes they then have to become the solution. And whether they want to fix things or not, that's up to them. You have no control over that. And I think really kind of having this lotus of control, the, you know, this, this, you know, this area of control is something that's really important to me because it shows that I have like control over my destiny of where I get to go, the things I actually do. And I think a lot of people, we want to point to other things. We want to point, you know, to issues, but then, but then you are dependent upon someone else fixing your problems, depending on something to fix your problems as well. And shifting it to the professional side, I remember I was talking to this administrator and he was sharing with me that he was very frustrated. He was trying to be, you know, very progressive in education, trying to do these really innovative things in school. And he's like, those teachers, these teachers, they cannot move forward. They're just, you know, so resistant to everything I share, all the things I'm trying to do really to make it better for kids. And they just cannot seem to come around. And I, and I said to him, Maybe you're the problem. Maybe it maybe it's you, right? And it wasn't a slight. I didn't know what he was doing or anything like this, but it was kind of the issue is that sometimes when we're trying to lead other people and they're not doing what we want, we say the things that we want them to hear just louder. And maybe we should just kind of rethink our our direction, rethink the pathway that we're trying to move people forward. Is there something that we're doing that's not working? Because here's the here's the deal. If you're so dependent on other people moving forward, you know, and you're the leader, right? And you can't get them to move forward, then something's wrong with your leadership, right? And maybe it's not, you know, I can't say in every circumstance, it's, you know, totally the administrator's fault. And that's actually not even what I'm saying, but I'm saying the approach that you're using right now is obviously not working. So what can you do? to actually change the approach. Because if you're doing this approach and it's not working, then the approach has to change. That's what you can control. And something I've always said is that you can't make people change. What you can do is create the conditions where change is more likely to happen, but you can't force people to do this as well. And I think a lot of times in, in our lives, um, we, we, we tend to kind of point to other circumstances, point to this. And when I look at my own, life, which is personal and professional in this. There's a lot of times that I look back on certain points in my career and I thought I was so unhappy at that school. And, and then, you know, I, I go to this place, the leadership wasn't great. You know, all of these issues pointing to this, pointing to that. And I think that a lot of times when we, we do that, it's easy to blame someone else, but then that doesn't make us change our behavior. But as I look back, I think, you know, what could I have done better at that time? What, what could I have done to kind of like grow myself? Like, I'm not saying to be honest, I'm not saying the leader was leaders were great in those circumstances, but what did I have control over? What could I actually do uh, in this opportunity? And I remember I went from one job to another and the George that left that school and the George that entered the new school were two totally different people. They are two totally different people in that, in that circumstance. And I remember just kind of saying like, Hey, I actually have this opportunity. And I think this is why I wanted to share this as the first episode uh, of the new year of the new season is that I actually went in there and said, look, nobody knows me. Nobody knows me here. I have a blank slate. I have, uh, nobody knows kind of how I view teaching or anything like that with this blank slate. What will I create? Will I go back to maybe some of the things I was doing? And I'm not saying I was a bad teacher or anything like that, but what can I do way better here? How can I paint something? Because I think a lot of times when I was in that situation that, you know, I taught a certain way at a certain viewpoint of education. And even though I would say that I improved many of the people I worked with, 
in one situation saw me as George five years ago, no matter what I did. But now I have this new slate. I have this new opportunity. And so, so then I took control of the situation and I was so blessed to have an incredible leader, uh, Kelly Wilkins, who I mentioned all the time, who saw me as, you know, having some real big impacts, ha having some potential. And I credit her with so much. But I'll also tell you this, if I did not come to that school ready to make an impact, really thinking about my attitude um, toward education, she wouldn't have had anything to do with me. She would have moved on from me very quickly because she was always about doing what's best for kids. And if she felt that I wasn't that person, she wouldn't have kept me there. So I think part of it was, hey, we, we do have some blessings of wonderful people in our lives. And that's great. And, you know, I, I, I wish every educator would have a Kelly Wilkins um, in, in their, in their school, in their career trajectory. Cause I know it made such a difference with me, but I will also take credit for changing my attitude, changing, you know, how I saw education, how I presented myself, how I went in these spaces. And so I'm not saying that people that we connect with aren't sometimes jerks, aren't sometimes, you know, terrible. What I'm really saying is that what I can control is myself, what I can do is have an impact. And one of the hard truths I have to share with people is sometimes, you know, we're at jobs that we dislike and we hope the people that we dislike, our bosses will leave. And they maybe don't ever leave. Maybe they stay there forever. Maybe they're in a place where they feel most comfortable. So we can be unhappy there or we can say, what do I have control over? What can I actually do in this situation? And looking at that. And I think sometimes when Again, I'm saying this over and over again because I think it's so important to share. When we're pointing to someone else as the problem, to the things that are bothering us, to the things that we're struggling with, then they also become the solution, right? And I'm not saying they're never the problem. I think it's very important to iterate or they didn't, haven't done anything wrong or whatever. But what I do know is that I have control over my actions, over the stuff that I can do to move forward. And so if I, if I, if I look at those things, and figure out what I can do to move forward to make myself better. I feel a lot more comfortable. That I have some control over this, but I also feel that it leads to something better. So what I want you to think about, you know, in this episode of the podcast, what are some of those things that are maybe irking you? Right. And I'm sure you could point to many, I could point to many for myself, but then more importantly, what is something you can do that's different? You know, if you're, if you're in a leadership position and you feel that people aren't moving forward, in your space what can you do different not what can you do louder what can you do different to actually help them get to that space if you're unhealthy if you're struggling you know with your health what can you do what do you have control over to actually create that helps you move forward to get into a more positive direction when we actually share this sometimes you know what are the things that we can improve that actually gives us a lot of ownership over moving forward so uh, thanks for listening to this episode. Uh, there's going to be more coming your way this season. I'm going to actually do, I think, seasons uh, in episodes of 10, but I, I hope you enjoyed it. And as I reminded you, uh, you know, as Lisa shared, you never know uh, the, the impact of your comments. So um, I'd love to hear from you. love to hear what you think. Maybe some of the solutions that you're creating for yourself to get better. So again, thank you for joining me on Mindset Monday. I hope you have a wonderful day. Take care. Thanks for all you do.